So what's up everyone, today we're going to be covering Rahu in the second house, so let's get started and not waste time, because I have to go to the beach. So, Rahu in the second house, what happens when Rahu, the north node of the moon, comes into your second house in your birth chart? Well, what is second house? Second house is your family, your speech, your ability to speak, how you speak, food that you take in, your appetite, because it represents the throat and you, for your food goes through this channel unless you're an alien and it goes through at the bottom <laughs> okay and second house represents your family environment okay it represents your early nourishment in the family what you learned in the family it represents family history but it also represents hoarded wealth meaning assets the money that you save okay how much money do you have how much money do you accumulate all that is seen in the second house rahu what did i tell you obsession Rahu is that thing that wants everything now, wherever it sits in. It wants to achieve everything now. It wants to be the best one out there. It wants to be the Lady Gaga of its placement, you know? Actually, that's not good. More like I would say Michael Jordan. Just want to be just, just the baddest, biggest thing ever out there, okay? So when Rahu comes into the second house, it represents a person who is constantly looking for social status who's constantly looking to achieve a, a, a higher level of recognition. Because second house represents, remember, the first house, the ascendant in the Vedic chart is below the second house. So you're born in the first house. But because of your second house, which represents family and wealth, it takes you up higher on to the you know, higher achievement of social circle. That's why family and the death house are up here. Do things that are above us, that we cannot escape. Death and the family that we're born in, okay? So Rahu, when it comes into the second house, it wants to achieve a higher level of uh, social circle. It gets obsessed with wealth, hoarding wealth. It wants wealth now. Like these are the, those quick, uh, you know, uh, moneymaker people. If there's no benefic influence on the second house, these, they, they just want to, you know, they'll, they'll, they can, they want to rob a bank and get the money now. They don't want to think about making 80,000 a year. And then slowly in 20 years, they can have a very good, uh, you know, nest egg of wealth. They're like, no, 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 no. I want this everything now so I can do everything that I want to do with this wealth now while I'm young. So in the second house, what Rahu does, it makes a person perceive themselves as something that they're not, meaning that they're so obsessed about uh, an image, so obsessed about being hierarchy into the social, social world that if they don't have money and they have a credit card, they will spend money on the credit card to get themselves a new car that they cannot afford, the latest toys that they cannot afford, the nice clothes that they cannot afford, they wear them, they drive them, they keep those toys with them. So anytime they come in contact with a third part person, they will think that, oh, wow, this person is rich. This person has money because they have all the latest toys. You know, while they might be living in a one bedroom apartment, but because these external little things can make a big difference in making person rich or poor, they go towards these things, you know? So that's what happens now. Can a person with Rahu in the second house have money from the beginning? Of course, if Rahu, let's say in the sign of Taurus, Rahu in the sign of Aquarius, you know, in the friendly signs, it does very well even at the early age. But uh, when it's in the enemy signs, you know, it tends to do worst of what I'm telling you. Okay, so second house represents vocal cord, meaning your speaking ability. These people tend to lie a lot. Okay, because second house is speech and La Rahu is a liar. So they lie a lot. Very and they have a very malefic speech, meaning that they can curse a lot normally. They would curse in a conversation. You know, you have friends who can just curse and curse and cursing. Their second house has to have a malefic influence on it for them to be that way. You know, uh, these people have the t tongue for the exotic foods because Rahu is unusual foreign things. So people with this uh, uh, placement love non-veg food. They have the taste for lawn veg exotic food. If they go to a restaurant and they see a lobster that they have never tried, they will try it. Because if they see somebody and they know, oh, this is supposed to be a rich food, uh, rich uh, people's food, let me try it. I want to feel rich. It's all about like them wanting to be obsessed with status and money that they just 
will do it even if they have, don't have the money. Okay, so that denotes to uh, these things. Um, family life is very unusual. You're born in a very unusual family. Maybe it could be a family of priests and healers, or it could be a family of thieves and robbers, gangsters, you know. And so when you go out in the world and you see a family that is a family of lawyers, doctors, engineers, politicians, you know, government workers, and you feel like, what the hell's wrong with me and my family? You know, is this normal, what we do? And so this is why the chase for that social status becomes even more apparent because they're grown up in such an unusual, chaotic environment that they want to feel that normal environment that, oh, I, I want to be in that doctor family. How do I get that status? Oh, maybe what if I have money? I can get that status. And since Rahu creates chaos too, family life is quite chaotic until Rahu removes its eclipse which is at the age of 32. So when you have Rahu in the second house, even though Rahu's eclipse, so it eclipses the second house, but then it removes it after 32, especially from a bad sign. So then the family coordinate relations become a little bit better. But till then it's chaotic where it can meet, even take a person to foreign lands. Because second house is family, Rahu is foreign things, unusual things. It can take you to an unusual foreign lands away from your family, okay? And your early education can suffer because your mind may not be able to concentrate as much especially when you know rahu is aspecting the moon from the second house uh, our early education is very tough for you because rahu is fogginess in front of your life you really do not know two plus two is four two plus two is six actually you have to know that even with rahu in the second house <laughs> from the second house that means if rahu is in the second house ketu is in the eighth house rahu wants to know the knowledge of a cult Rahu wants to learn the knowledge that it can have the power to tell the foretell the future. But they struggle a lot because Rahu becomes obsessed about those things. So what happens is these people, if they try to make predictions without any benefic aspect of Jupiter, they can become bad astrologers. Okay, because they're so obsessed in learning that they just start amateurly giving predictions out there. And even though it may not be right, but they want to feel like, hey, I know this, I can do this. But if you have this and you try to be an astrologer, unless there's a benefic aspect of Jupiter with this, where Jupiter says, all right, all right, all right, you're obsessed about this knowledge, but please do not screw other people's life here. Here, a little bit of knowledge here, learn something and give it up. So that's what happens. It's a tremendous obsession with the unknown power, the unknown knowledge, and they want to be able to project family lineage through themselves. Because, you know, Rahu becomes whatever planet it sits in. So if it's in Leo, it becomes like a sun. That be where it really wants to brighten itself and become the head of the family. And Rahu is not happy in the uh, sign of Leo because it's an enemy sign. So it puts an eclipse on there. If Rahu is in um, Virgo or Gemini, it can have, be very good for studies of the sci scientist research, research. Okay, so research studies comes into Rahu in the second house with in his mercurial sign okay or even saturn sign it can make a person pharmacist or somebody who is working uh in the medicine business if rahu is in certain times we'll go over this soon but these are my analysis guys for rahu in the second house if you are new to my channel subscribe about because i'm going to be might be covering your next house placement and i'll be doing all the planetary placement and if you want to know more about astrology and if you want to know more about vedic astrology the true astrology check out the link below Check out my book, Their Astrology at the Speed of Light. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Time to go to the beach, huh, Yash? Yeah, let's go to the beach so I can get you all the chicks at the beach, huh? Oh, and make sure to subscribe above. <laughs>